So thanks everybody for joining us. Um, <clears throat> I am an occupational therapist. I've been working for Greater Rutland County. I'm in, going into my third year now, or, or is this my fourth year? Um, <clears throat> and one of the things that was a goal of mine when I first started was to develop um, a district-wide assistive technology team. And it is something that's definitely um, within the scope of maybe some goals. Um, for our district. It just, we haven't had the resources yet or the time yet for that to happen, but within the next, um, I'm hoping with it by next year, we'll have a better um, idea of what that, could, what that could potentially look like. Um, but in the meantime, I'm still um, a very, I'm kind of a, just interested in technology anyway, and educational technology and assistive technology. And um, actually the two cross over quite a bit. There's a lot of, um, you know, similarities. And it used to be that um, assistive technology was specifically for people with disabilities and um, <clears throat> educational technology wasn't so much a thing as it is now. So I actually like that. <clears throat> um, there's a concept called universal design so that um, whatever is available for people with any level of need is sometimes useful for all kinds, you know, for lots of people. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share um, a very brief, just a few slides. Uh, more than anything, I'm just going to be talking and showing you um, different, um, let's see here, different, um, <clears throat> possibly, you know, different types of Chrome extensions and apps today. But before we do that, I just want to give a real quick synopsis of what assistive technology is. <coughs> And um, so you're not seeing me in present view, sorry. Okay, so <clears throat> assistive technology um, is, let me back up, sorry about this. This is all of this presenting online is very new to me. So thank you for your patience. <laughs> uh, this, just because I'm not confident, is everybody seeing the slide? The yes, slides. we are okay. seeing it. Yeah, and now I can't, because I'm sharing it in my window, I also can't see anybody. So, okay. So um, there was an act, it's assistive technology is um, attached to disability rights and assistive technology act of 1998 defines AT as any piece of equipment, any item piece of equipment product, whether acquired commercially off the shelf, modified or customized that's used to increase, maintain or improve functional capabilities of people with disabilities. And then IDEA took that one step further and basically added the words of a child with a disability. So, uh, so technology really goes, ranges anywhere from literally no tech to, um, I'm gonna shut that off for a minute because this is really awkward for me. So um, it goes from no tech to what we used to call low tech, more we call light tech now to, to um, medium tech and high tech. So uh, pardon me while I fumble around here and try to find my window again. Don't need that. At this whole time, are you just seeing my slideshow? Erica, okay, thank you, Alina, yay. All right, so I can toggle back and forth. That's really helpful to, to know. Okay, um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna go back to this slide, which is, um, nope. All right, let me go out of there. Sorry about that, folks. your patient crew. All right. So there. All right. I stopped. I stopped sharing for a minute so that I can. Um, so technology. So assistive technology ranges from 
I mean, I see, I'm just looking, I know most of you and I know the, the age range that we're talking about. So I think moving forward, if we were, what the plan would be is that we would <clears throat> maybe focus in on some things that are useful for really young learners and then through the ages. And then we can also do it by categories like types of um, needs that we would be addressing. So if it was for visual impairments, we might have like a whole group of apps and ideas for people who need help with, um, you know, who, who need support with visual impairment. Um, if it's for attention deficit, if it's for um, <clears throat> learning um, disabilities or reading fluency or math disability. So there's, <clears throat> so there's lots of different types. And what I'm going to do today is just go over sort of a range of um, apps and some basics about how to use Google as your um, first and foremost, like the tools that are inherent already in Google um, for your um, assistive tech for students. And the thing is, it doesn't have to just be for students with just disabilities. This can These can be helpful to any student. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is voice typing. <clears throat> and I think most people would be familiar with this, but maybe not. So, um, let me go back and just say, are, are folks seeing my screen? Um, Patty, no, we have to reshare. All right, how about, can you just tell me now if you are seeing my screen? No, you have to go back to the Google Meet when, okay, now it's going, here you go. Okay, thank you, all right. Here we go. <clears throat> okay, so I just, I just took this particular, um, I opened up a Google Doc and um, for voice typing, it's voice, it's speech recognition. So it's recognizing my voice. If I wanted to type something in, I would go to Google tools. I would go down here to voice typing. I can also use the keyboard shortcut control shift S. I go to voice typing. It's gonna ask me to use the first time you ever do this, it will ask you to access your microphone and you will allow it. And then when you click on your microphone, it will record, it will type out whatever you say. The interesting thing about voice typing is that, and this is about speech recognition in general, is oftentimes we think that the computer wants to hear one word at a time, but the technology is, is taking um, sentences in context. And so, um, if you, you get, you hear people get frustrated and like, they'll say a sentence and it doesn't come out right. And then they say the quick Brown Fox, and it can't understand that as well as it can understand a line in context. So I'll show you the example, the example of how Google voice works. So I'll say, I'm going to just repeat the same, um, assistive tech paragraph that I had written before or that I copied before. So here I go. Any item, piece of equipment, or product system, whether acquired commercially off the shelf, modified or customized, that is used to increase, maintain, or improve functional capabilities of individuals with disabilities. I then shut off the microphone. Um, I can check it. The, the thing is, it's also a little bit of a complex task. It's not as simple as a child can just go up and speak into a computer because there's on the fly editing that is required. Um, so it's kind of a sophisticated task, but it's better than not being able to write at all. Um, I'm gonna shut the mic down right now. Um, another type of um, built-in accessibility feature in Chromebooks in general is that you can select text and have it read aloud to you, or you can have the whole screen read to you. I'm going to show, I'm going to demonstrate how you do that. And again, there'll be links to all of these in um, the slideshow that I share at the end. <clears throat> but for having um, to hear text read aloud, you highlight the text that you want. I like to do this. You'll activate this in your, in your settings, and I'll give a link about how to do this. But you have to set up your Chromebook to be ready to do this. And we can teach our students how to do this. 
Um, you can have it so that when you click, it just starts reading the entire page, but I think it's more functional to have them select an amount of speech that they want to hear. I'm not sure if you'll get the audio from my computer, but what I'm doing is I'm selecting the, the, the paragraph that I want read to me, and then I'm going to hit on a Chromebook, um, there's a button called the, it's called the search button and it's on the left under the tab and it looks like a little magnifying glass. When you touch that, when you activate this feature, which is inherent in all Chromebooks, when you activate, when you push that button and S for speak at the same time, it will read the selection out loud to you. Any item, piece of equipment or product system why the required commercially off-the-shelf modified or customized that is used to increase, maintain, or improve functional capabilities of individuals with disabilities. So the benefit to that is, in fact, I did have an error in my speech. Instead of whether, it said why the. So what I would do is now I can go back and I can highlight this and I can either type in the word weather or I can go back to my tools back to voice typing, weather, it's going to give me the wrong spelling. So because it's underlined, it tells me I have some options. So if I right click, which is on the Chromebook, two fingers down on the trackpad, it's going to give me some options. It says, did you mean weather? Did you mean W-T-H-E-R? And yes, I did mean weather. The capitalization, um, that's just something you're going to have to go back and get on your own. Um, students will eventually learn that skill to do that. So those are two features that are just right already everybody has access to. Um, the next thing that I'm going to stop sharing again for a minute. Um, the next thing that I want to talk about is um, Google. How do I shut that off? It's not letting me stop. Oh, there we go. Just a little bit slow. Um, Google Chrome and on your Google Drive, um, you have access and students have access to Google Apps, Google Extensions, and another thing called Google Add-ons, which I'm not gonna cover today. But a Google App, I'm just gonna give a very basic synopsis of what these are. So a Google App is basically like an application that you can go use, for example, Docs or, for example, slides. Those would be Google apps. And there are, just like when you go to the iTunes store and get apps for your MacBook or for your iPhone, in Google there are bazillions, I don't know the number, tens of thousands, I'm sure, of apps. <clears throat> and in our district, students can get apps, but there's some that they won't, they're, they're pretty well regulated. So when you determine an app that you want your student to have, you need to go and see if it's on the allowed list. And if it's not, we can contact IT and get it put on the allowed list. You might have, you might notice that um, if you look, if you're on a Chromebook now, if you look in the upper right, you'll see next to your search bar or next to your address bar, you'll see usually a series of a few little tiny icons. Those are all apps or extensions and that and you by clicking on those, you can activate them. So one Google app that is on all Chromebooks is a little purple puzzle piece that says RW. That's read and write for Google. And I think I would like to save that for that is a powerful tool that could use a whole lunch and learn session or a whole other time of learning. But it's a very powerful app. Um, so that's what, so that's what Google apps are. They're programs that you use when you're on a Chromebook or when you're using Google drive, you can use it on any computer, but so those are what apps are. Um, and then the other thing is Google extensions. And so what Google extensions are, are, um, tools that extend the power of another program that you're using or another device that you're using. So um, the um, if I'm in one program, so like if I'm in a Google Doc, 
I could actually be running at the same time an extension that allows me to do more within that document. Or if I'm searching the web, I could activate an extension that allows me to search the web in a little bit of a different way, or it can toggle um, what I'm seeing differently. And there's, again, as with apps, there's tens of thousands of these extensions available, many of which, um, well, many of which are very powerful and helpful, and also many of which are like silly and you can, you can kind of get into a little trouble, not trouble, but it can, it, it can get persnickety. It can make your computer a little bit wonky if you're not careful and you download too many. Um, <clears throat> but there are some really great apps and extensions that support learners with disabilities. And um, so I'm going to talk about, um, like I said, read and write for Google is, um, it's an, I'm going to just go ahead and share again. Actually, I don't think I'll go down that road. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to show an app. I'm going to talk about some categories of apps and then I'm maybe show just looking at the time one or one from each possibility. So um, there is, I'm going to go to present mode again. Um, there's an app. There are apps for different categories. So, um, for people with disabilities, those categories might be um, math, ADHD, um, staying focused, um, self-regulation, um, reading disabilities, so you need something to help with fluency. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to share a screen. I'm going to go to a website. Let me just go to, not that I'm a huge fan, but it's always easy to go to the Wikipedia, and um, we'll look up uh, let's look up zebras today. All right, so go to the wiki. I'm going to look up zebras. So when I look at zebras, I will get the screen that comes up with zebras. And so that's a ton of information. So I can use an extension to help me um, with a few things. So there are extensions that would... Um, condense what I'm seeing. There are extensions that would um, read this for me and highlight the words. Um, I'm going to show in here if I can find it. Film remote. Excuse me. Let me go to my extensions. So here's how if you're seeing on my computer all these little icons at the top, these are all my apps and extensions. And then I can't fit. I don't, I don't see what you're seeing, Patty. Uh-oh, thank you. Okay. Um, like, I don't think you've shared your screen. Darn it. Oh, because I had to click there and say yes. Thank you, Erica. <laughs> okay. So I've gone to Wikipedia. I pull up Zebra. Um, and now up, if you can see my mouse, up in the right-hand corner, you'll see me, um, I'm pointing to the different apps and extensions. So if you look in the corner of yours, you might have these. You may not have any activated right now, but most people do have this purple puzzle piece that says read and write for Google. When I go to the three dots down over here, so I can't list all of my apps and extensions up here. So when I go to the three dots down, and then I go over to more tools, I can go down to extensions here. All right. And then this is sharing all the extensions that I've either um, put on my computer or I've showed an interest in. And I, I maybe like you'll see the radio button. Basically, I have it on or I don't. So some of them I don't have on. Um, <clears throat> I'm looking for one called Zoom. Nope, not Zoom. That's not the Zoom one. Um, it was called Beeline Reader. So I don't have it. So I'm going to um, go back to um, my apps and extensions up here. And um, <clears throat> since I don't have that on here, <laughs> I can't show it. But I think then what I would do is um, give you a list of possibilities 
of what you could do on a web page like this with different apps and extensions. So one of them would be that I could go to, um, depending on the app, you know, depending on what it is that I want to do, there's an app that I could have it highlight the screen. I could have it highlight line by line. Um, I could have it highlight line by line for the reader so that the rest of it, there's an app, there's an extension and I have a link to it called Visor. And what that does is it allows only a small part of the page to be, to be, um, the rest of the page is sort of not, it's not erased, but it's sort of muted out visually and you just see kind of the few lines that you want to be reading. So it helps you hone in on just a few lines at a time. It's basically a virtual bookmark. Um, <clears throat> there's another one that will um, also be a screen reader, although you can do that on your Chromebook anyway. Now it used to be you used to have an app for that. There's another one called Beeline Reader, which when you highlight the text and select it, um, <clears throat> it's supposed to be what they call dyslexia friendly, which um, is an interesting way to put it, but that it's good for visual tracking. So Beeline Reader is, a, is a, an extension that <clears throat> converts the text, it color codes the text um, at random, but what, so it's red, green, and blue, and you don't notice it really when you're reading, but what happens is you'll get red, green, and blue, and whatever this line ends with, the next line resumes with that color. So your eye is led by color to the next line. So it's really good for reading fluency and tracking. That's a really good app um, <clears throat> or, an, or an extension to run. There's another extension called Just Read, which will take, if you're on a web page with a lot of content and maybe some ads, it gets rid of everything except for the text and then you're just reading the text. And so you're, so if you have a child who has a hard time focusing or an adult, it doesn't have to be a student, for me, it would work. Um, and it gets rid of all that extraneous information. Like you see an ad down here and you see options in different locations um, for on the page. It can be very visually distracting. Um, that one's called Just Read. Um, there's the app that I mentioned called Visor. Then there's other apps and extensions um, some are called, um, some are in the category of focusing and um, staying on the same page and not letting you veer from that page. And so it takes a little bit of self-discipline. So this would be for older students or an, or an adult would need to set it for the child. But there, um, one is called Simple Blocker. And basically it's a timer and it doesn't let you leave that tab or that page for X amount of pages. And these are all customizable. So maybe it'll let you go to other pages. It just won't let you go to YouTube or Facebook. Um, it will just keep you on, you know, it limits like you can veer off, but you can't veer off and end up in a rabbit hole of social media or, or whatever your gig is that you tend to get distracted by. Um, <clears throat> so I think um, it, we're, getting close to the end now. And I feel like I've just been scrambling through a snippet. It's obviously way bigger topic than 30 minutes. And there's anything from pre-K to well into adulthood um, supports that are available. I've shown like two or three online. I'm sorry, I was a little spotty about, um, it's kind of new for me to present in this way. So you're, I, I'm really appreciative of your patience <laughs> with that. Um, I'll definitely hone my skills and get better at that for um, when we decide like, what topics, if we want to continue this, if people do mm -hmm. show an interest in specific ages or specific types of disabilities, um, be more than happy to, you know, put together um, something more succinct for specific to your, you know, your teaching needs. Um, so I don't know if anybody has any questions, um, any comments, I would welcome that. Yeah, anyone's welcome to make comment or anything. And just so People know this. Patty was just kind of giving you um, an overall overview of what can be out there for all of you students, and that we'll be inviting her back frequently for Lunch and Learns to kind of zone in on certain specifics um, and areas so that she can go through. She just kind of talked about some of the programs, but, um, you know, at some point she will be able to, like, zone in on one or two based on a the theme. Um, that you guys can come and learn about and how to set up and use. And 
And definitely if anybody has a specific need, reach out to me um, because chances are if there's something you're trying to do and you can't do it, there's either a way to do it. And if there isn't, um, there's a way to get people to help us get a way to do it. So um, it's yeah. really a passion area of mine. And um, I'd be more than happy to, you know, kind of collaborate with anybody who wants to um, meet a specific student's need, special ed or not, is not really relevant to me. Yep. Awesome. Thank you, Patty. So if nobody has any questions, they're, they're welcome to reach out to you individually. And sure. I will also be making sure this goes on our YouTube channel. Awesome. Great. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful um, vacation. And yeah. Yeah. yeah, you too. Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye.